Welcome to Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest video. In today's video, we will be talking about the idea of percentage and its related problems. And this video is for grades 7 and 8 students. In today's session, we will be solving three practice questions. And please have a piece of paper and pencil ready and be sure to hit the pause button whenever you want to give yourself some time to think. And we hope you enjoy working with percentage. The first question we may ask, what is percentage? Percentage describes a portion of a whole. And percent is often used as a unit. Percent means parts per hundred. Some examples of where percent is used in daily life are to describe test marks, to calculate tax, and to state store discounts. We can use equivalent forms of percentages interchangeably. Equivalent forms outside percents include fractions, decimals, and ratios. Any number that can be written as a decimal, fraction, ratio, or percent can also be written using the other three representations. How do we convert common fractions to percent? A common fraction represents a part of a whole, or most generally, as any number of equal parts. A common fraction is expressed as a numerator over the denominator, or the number of parts over the whole. To convert a common fraction into a percent, we simply rewrite the fraction with a denominator of 100, since percent means parts per 100. For instance, if we have a fraction 1 over 2 and we want to convert into percent, the first thing we're going to do is we want to convert the denominator into 100. So we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 50. Therefore, 1 half is equal to 50 over 100, and that's equal to 50%. Therefore, 1 over 2 is equal to 50%. The next thing we're going to take a look here is how do we convert decimal to fraction and percent. A decimal represents a number that contains a fractional part. If converted to a common fraction, its denominator is expressed as a power of 10. The numerator of the fractional part is expressed to the right of a decimal point. Here are two examples, and we notice that the common fraction form can often reduced or simplified. The first example is we want to convert 0 0.45 into a fraction. Step 1. We want to convert the denominator into a power of 10. And we get 45 over 100. And that's equal to 9 over 20 by simplification. The second example is we have 32.125. Notice that 0 0.125 can be converted into 1 to 5 over 1000. Therefore, 32.125 is equal to 32 and 125 over 1000, and that's equal to 32 and 1 over 8. To convert a decimal into a percent, we simply multiply the decimal number by 100 and write the percent symbol behind it. For example, if we have 0 0.45, the first step is we want to time 0 0.45 by 100. And then we add a percent symbol behind it because percent is basically saying parts per 100. How do we convert ratios to percents? A ratio is defined as a comparison of two numbers. The two numbers are often called the terms. Ratio and fraction are very similar. We can convert a ratio to a fraction by writing the first term as the numerator and the second term as the denominator. To convert ratios to percents, 
we simply multiply by the number which converts the second term to 100. The first term, when multiplied by the same number, becomes a percent. For example, if we have ratio 2 to 5, and we want to convert this ratio to percent, first, we time the second term by 20, so that the second term becomes 100. Remember, we also need to time the first term by 20 as well. So we have the ratio 40 to 100, and that's equal to 40%. We can also change the ratio to a fraction first. So we know that 2 to 5 is equal to 2 over 5, and that's equal to 40 over 100. That's equal to 40%. Therefore, 2 to 5 equals to 40%. Let's try some practice on converting one form to the others. There are four questions below. In each of those questions, you are either given a percent, a common fraction, a decimal fraction, or a ratio. Your task is to convert it into the other three forms. Pause the video now and try those questions on your own. And when you're ready, keep watching and check your answers. We wish you best of luck. Did you get those correct? Now, let's try some problems related to a percentage. We will now look at question one. Ivan obtained 85% on a test. Tibor obtained 90% on the same test. However, he earned only one point more than Ivan did. What was the number of points for a mark of 100% on this test? Be sure to pause the video to try this question on your own. To start the problem, let n be the number of points on the test. Since we know that 85% is equal to the decimal 0 0.85 and 90% is equal to the decimal 0 0.90 or 0 0.9, we can say Ivan obtained 0 0.85 endpoints and Tibor obtained 0 0.90 endpoints. Since the score difference between Tibor and Ivan is 1 point, you may write the following equation to determine the total number of points on the test, which is represented by n. The equation is 0.90n minus 0.85n is equal to 1. And we get 0.05n is equal to 1. To isolate n, we divide both sides by 0.05, and we get n is equal to 20. Hence, the number of points on the test is 20, which corresponds to e. Now we are ready for the next question. We will now look at question two. There are 200 fish in an aquarium. 1% of them is blue. All the rest are yellow. How many yellow fish do we have to take out of the aquarium so that blue fish represent 2% of all aquarium fish? Be sure to pause the video to try this question on your own. Among 200 fish in an aquarium, 1% are blue fish. Thus, there are 200 times 1%, which is equal to 200 times 0 0.01, which is the equivalent to two blue fish in the aquarium. In order for two blue fish to constitute 2% of the population of fish in the aquarium, the new population must consist of 100 fish in total, since 2% is equal to 2 over 100. We can see that the numerator 2 corresponds to 2 bluefish, and the denominator 100 must then represent the total number of fish in the aquarium. Thus, it is evident that the new population of fish must consist of 100 fish in total. Therefore, the number of yellow fish removed from the aquarium should be 200 minus 100 and is equal to 100 yellow fish. This means the correct answer is E. Are we ready for the next question? Question 3 asks, 
What percentage of all natural numbers from 1 to 10,000 are perfect squares? A perfect square is a number that can be represented as a square of a natural number. For instance, 100 equals 10 squared, and therefore 100 is a perfect square. Please be sure to pause this video and try this problem on your own before proceeding. Note that natural numbers are whole numbers. They cannot contain fractional parts. Also remember that 10 squared is equal to 10 times 10. Therefore, in a general form, a perfect square can be represented as n squared or n times n, where n is a natural number. Note that 1 is equal to 1 squared and also that 10,000 is equal to 100 squared. Therefore, there is no perfect square that is bigger than 100 squared that fits the criteria given in the question. That means the natural numbers from 1 to 10,000 contain all perfect squares from 1 squared to 100 squared inclusive which makes the total number of perfect squares in this range of numbers to be 100. Since we know there are 10,000 numbers in the range of natural numbers given, that makes the percent of perfect squares in this range of numbers to be 100 over 10,000. We can write this over a denominator of 100 by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 100 to yield a fraction of 1 over 100, which is equivalent to 1%. This corresponds to choice A. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you had fun learning and problem solving with us. See you next time.